Hello and welcome back to this channel. This is actually a, the kit that I will be making on this tutorial. And this is being recorded after I actually put the kit together because I didn't have a second kit. This is my first try at making this kit um, after I revised the PDF file which I purchased uh, to make it my own and I added many different elements um, to this um, mantle clock. Um, I'm quite pleased with the end result um, and once I tweak this kit I will do a final finished tutorial of the actual kit and all the pieces because if when you watch this uh, from beginning to end you will see that I was even making adjustments as we went along. And here are the pieces for the mantle clock as I have changed and as I imagine in my head I would like it to um, be and um, I will be going through step by step for the first time putting it together and you and I will go through the creative part of putting a kit together and testing a kit. I think it's sort of important because sometimes we don't give enough credit to those people who create kits. Um, I know that once you create one, well, there you go. The rest is easy peasy. But to get that first one off the ground sometimes is hours and hours of work and thought uh, process goes into it. So without further ado, I will start by saying here are some of the pieces. And this is for the base. This is for the back side, front side, some trim for the clock face, the uh, clock face, which is something that I picked out and um, some um, this is to cover the clock face and this you will see how I use it and you'll see that this is also not in the original um, file that I purchased totally like I say totally different my first step is going to be to paint every single bit of um, material that I have here because I don't know what's going to show and I don't know um, if I'll be able to paint it properly. So I'm just going to give it a coat of what I think will be like a wood uh, finish for this clock. Um, not I'm feeling that it should be a wood finish. So I'm going to create some wood um, looking uh, stain, if you will, and I will paint everything and come back. Now the pieces are all painted and I'd like to talk to you about a couple of the pieces. This one, this is going to be this, but I had already put it together. So I painted the strip so you could see what it is. And this strip, when you overlap exactly a quarter of an inch overlap, you're going to get this. Just simply overlap it by a quarter of an inch on this side a bit of glue and I did it to save me time but then I forgot that I needed to show you what I did do to get that that which is also this the other pieces I wanted to talk to you about are these um, dowels um, which was from this this one and also from the toothpick now I think I've showed you how um, to cut the size they'll become they'll come to you cut but 
I just want to give you a little uh, pointer on I, I think I've done this before on a video so I measure so I measured the the amount that I want to cut and that was exactly a quarter of an inch I put my blade in use a piece of sandpaper to roll it and you will see that it will not roll out of position just keep rolling it until you go through now you take that same piece and you try rolling it on your counter you see how how it's not rolling it's just not rolling I don't know if you can tell I'm going to try and close up here see it's just not rolling take that same piece put it on top of a sandpaper any grit and it'll roll really nicely so I don't need to go all the way through same thing with the toothpick toothpick will roll really nicely here and it'll stay and you get a nice clean cut every time try doing that on your tabletop it just it just sticks um, it just even on a mat board you see that it just doesn't doesn't roll doesn't roll so I hope that's a little pointer for you and now we're going to start uh, putting these pieces together I'm going to start with the base uh, because it seems to be the easiest pick one side for the bottom and then there are three sizes and they're going to stack so that it'll give you a little bit of a ridge um, kind of making a little um, decorative ridge and, and you apply glue to the bottom as you know these were painted on both sides but this one was a I ran out of paint so I did it with a lighter color because it just doesn't matter and I'm going to line it up on one side so I'm going to call it the back side is going to be flash to the back and go like this drop it way to the back so now you've created a little lip all the way around that'll give you a little bit of a molding feel that's got some glue there it doesn't matter because I'm going to put the smaller one on top of that in the same way flat to one side to the back side again flat to the back and divide up the spacing and there it is flat at the back and you have a little two step that it gives you a little bit of a, a detail this is the base of the mantle clock now we're going to go to the back on the back of this one see how it is all flat on the side what I've done was I took poking tool and I scraped so as to give you uh, wood grain or wood veins see how that turns out I just didn't like it looking straight um, flat like that this will all be different once you apply the finish I've got that with the the scratching back or the wood grain back I'm going to take this piece the round piece this round piece and going to glue it to the inside we're going to call it the inside leaving about 1 32nd of an inch from the top the seam part down I'm going to do it towards you like that the seam part is down because you won't be able to see it this is going to be on the inside and you're going to leave about one um, one thirty second of an inch on the top all the way around so now I'm going to apply glue to one edge doesn't matter which edge to go all the way around and it doesn't have to be super tidy either because um, you'll see it's going to be on the inside so here we go we've got that there and I'm going to just glue it on about 1 32nd of an inch from the top what that will do is it will give you a bit of a, again detail so push it down push it down hard we're going to leave it for a bit while that dries we're going to go to what we call the front this is going to be the front on the front we're going to glue even with the top just glue it on and again one side you will call the good side of course. there we go okay and now it's going to go on one side this is going to be called the front of the clock and even it out way around it should fit exactly and just so you know like that 
So now we're going to glue a little bit of the clear plastic, which will become the glass. And it's going to go, this is the front, the front with the molding. It's going to go on the back. A couple of bits on the top. This stuff does tend to be annoying, but it is good. I'm going to take tweezers for that. Sorry, that could be the fishmonger. Just going to not touch it too terribly much. Doesn't need a lot to grip. Okay, now I've got the clock face and on top of what you just glued, you're going to glue the face of the clock. I'm going to test it out. Lay a bit of glue on just the edge. It doesn't come through. Just go all the way around like that. And now I'm going to try see if I can place it. The next bit that we're going to work on, while that's drying, this is drying, we're going to put the feet on the base. And what I've created for feet are these little rolls. I thought they would look nice. So on the back, not the portion where it's got the little ridges, but on the back, going to take one, one of the feet and I'm going to put white glue going in a little bit from the edge and I'm going to create that little footing. Let's call it a footing, not a leg. And these four are all the same size, so it doesn't really matter which ones you pick up. We're going to put another bit on this side and put it on the other side. And I'm doing it about a sixteenth from the outside. You turn it block will be slightly raised. Okay, now so let's continue. I have a few things dried up and while I was letting stuff dry, I realized that I wanted to do something a little bit different. So I have added a couple more pieces of the toothpick and now it's time to put the front and the back together. While it still looks quite dull, it will look better, I promise you. So now we've come to the point where we're going to glue the front to the back and then put it on the base and then add the little whatnots. I'm going to take one of the thicker dowels that have been painted, put some glue on one side, not too much or it will take forever to dry and we can't move it around. And I think I might be using tweezers. And I'm going to add it to to the bottom of the back, right about there. Push down, make sure it's on a nice upright position. We're going to do the same thing with the other side. I'm eyeballing this, I think it'll be just right. The kit gets done, I will put markers. I think I'll be able to put a little work on that. It's nice to be able to have the freedom to do something on your own as well. And I'm going to put this one right beside it but in the center of this little decorative bit here. That glue, as you know, is going to dry clear. Not going to worry about it now. Take another one of the same toothpick size and dab it in the glue. Again, it's white glue. And I'm going to put it on this little bit of a, there's a little bit of a hump. Now I'm going to continue with the other side. These are going to act as, um, supports for when I glue the front to the back as well as decorative item. Oh, you stay nice and put here. Too much glue and that's what happens. Too much room to wiggle. So now that we have that in place, I would like to set it aside and give the glue a bit of a chance to connect. Now we're going to work, continue to work on the front. We still have this rim and again some glue to the inside of the rim. Now I'm going to take it and center it, center it on top of the other flat card and I'm going to just dab it down instead of using my fingers. So that's that. Then I think I'm going to add this little bit of detail. Okay, it's going to go on one side. We're going to put glue all the way across. I almost think you don't need it all the way, but why not? And I'm going to face it so I can see it. I'm going to center it in the bottom underneath on the face. I think it's pretty much center. I'm going to put it here. 
way too much glue. I think you already can tell that. And I'm going to put this one here. And then I have these other, they are kind of little four leaf clovers. And I'm going to put that one here. I don't know. You know what? This is the first one. We'll think about it and make changes afterwards. And then I have, I'm not sure. I'm just going to put this one here and the other one. Or maybe, well, you know what? Let's just hit it and put it in. And I think I'm going to put it right about, and if it's still early, and I'm going to take a look at it. I might just move it before it dries. Oh, you know what? I think I'm just going to leave it like that. I'm trying to remove some of it now. And second to last bit is to apply glue onto the tops, all the pegs. And then on this side. And then we're going to apply glue to the entire circle. Okay. Well, it's not going to go anywhere. And now very carefully, you're going to have to eyeball this one in place, but I think we can. So we're going to see if I can do close up. Just line it up, top, line up. And if I go gently, I see something's moved here. Squeezing it with the pegs. Now you see what those were about. Gives you a decorative detail, plus it keeps the clock in place. And guess what? We've got one piece left, which is the bottom. Well, now we go to the bottom. I'm being very gentle with it because you know that it's fresh glue. And not using that nice little applicator because it's got a different glue in it right now. So for this, I'm going to lay it down backside. Take this back side and also lay it down. And now you're going to simply center it between the two ends and you're going to squeeze it tight. So in the back, it's nice and tight. Make sure you squeeze these two together. And now the kit is assembled. What I've done, because as you know, the gnarly paint that I have, um, I sand it down some of the brown in a way that it looks like um, wood and all I'm going to do now and I didn't do it on camera because you're going to use different paints and uh, and this is the test one and I only have one so I didn't really want to be playing around with paint too much uh, because I wanted to get this kit um, demoed so I'm just going to be adding a coat of um, some sort of a glaze uh, to make this little guy shine like as if he was uh, done in wood. I hope you enjoyed the process um, that I took you through uh, the initial putting together of the kit. Um, I hope to make uh, some tweaks and adjustments and when I do I'll come back here and show you the final result of the kit and uh, give you a couple of different finishes, I hope, uh, but that won't happen for probably another month or so uh, when I can get home and um, make more adjustments. For now, uh, thank you for joining me on this. Um, hopefully you like and subscribe if you're not already done so. Hit the bell for upcoming notifications. And for now, ciao.